Okay, so now that these components are not finished, let's go ahead and use the let's go ahead and use the octopart method, right? Let's say you have a component where you look for the manufacturer part number. By the way, if you're not using octopart to look for your components, you are missing out because let me show you how powerful this online tool is. Now I can add this to my bill of materials, right? I can get CAD models. What I care about is the CAD model because I already have the bill of materials on here. So if I click on the CAD model, see, I can see how available this component is as well. It was in abundance earlier. Uh, and I think I'll go with Ultra Librarian. It has a symbol footprint and a 3D, and I like how Ultra Librarian does its thing. So I'd go ahead and download this 3D CAD model. I'll get the step file, get it for Alti and PCB Designer, and then log in to download. Okay, so I logged in and I'll download this file. Now this is the complicated way. What I'm just showing you in case you don't have manufacturer part search available at your fingertips, and you can see how um, how useful things like ultra librarian and so on are so on. So I'll go quick extract that and then extract. Right. Then we will go to our Altium designer folder. This is a script. So I'm going to go ahead into Altium. And if you're not using Altium already, then you need to be doing that. The best engineers choose Altium designer with Altium 365. Okay. Here you can get a free trial of Altium. Or if you already have Altium and you're considering buying it, you'll get a discount on the current price. Go to File, Run Script. All right, then you want to browse for that script. And this would be in my Downloads folder. So I just got this, Altium Designer. And we have our UVL Importer. Now it's important to choose the text file that is in the same folder as this. This will default to the previous folder that you got your text file for a script in. So you need to double check that manually and go into the folder each time. Okay. In this case, we got lucky, but be careful with that. Now you'll get a notification or warning sometimes, but hit click, click OK anyway. Then you can do certain things. Like for instance, once you have your part, download it. It may not show. You'll need to go to your panels, PCB library, then click on it. Then it'll show. Sometimes you have to double click and then it'll start showing the footprint. Then what I want to do is look at this in 3D. So hit the three key to see if it shows up in 3D. And yes, it sure does. The next thing you do is go back to your projects. And, uh, you know, I like the fact that it has the manufacturer part number for the part name, but I want to go to the schematic library in the panels here and I give it a different name and a description. So if I were to go into my, my bill of materials list, right, that I would have created by going into Octopart and whatnot, then, then going in that bill of materials list, I can pull the name, right click, and then do some things like double click on this, change the design item ID, right? Give it a proper description that works for me. Okay. Or just leave it at that for now and then check this out. So also you want to make sure that you can actually find the, the footprint that this thing has or wants to look for. So you have the CL0A. Now, why doesn't it show up? What you have to do is save the PCB library if you want it to uh, show up. So if there are any changes you make where you, you clicked on it, or you double clicked on it for whatever reason, you need to resave it and then it shows up, right? Once that's done here, I'm going to delete this unnecessary component. Right, that's good. You even have things like the model manager, but I won't get into all that right now. This is a solid schematic symbol. And then you can 
close this. Close PCB library as well. All right, so once you have that good, you can rename this entire library package. All right. And then you can compile your integrated library. Great, great, great. I'm going to close this PCB panel, go to my components, and notice here I have my integrated library. Now, how do I get this into my cloud? I can import a library here. You click on those three lines, import a library. Right. This means you can this means you can make as many local library components as you want from, say, Octopart or Ultra Librarian. And once you're done making the parts exactly the way you want them to be, you could select your 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 library to import them. in. so you set that as capacitors, it has your symbols, your footprints. And it is importing it into your Altium 365 environment. Import successful, open the log, right? And you can see all the details here. Once you've done that, do you need your local cap ceramic capacitor library anymore? No, you don't. So let me show you why and how. So if I were to go to my schematic and I'll just go to components, see this name here? Cap ceramic X5R. If I'm only looking in this library, it shows up uh, as the only thing. If I go into my all, which includes my Altium 365, and then I search, now I've got it showing up in my in my environment. No description available. Remember how I didn't have a description in the local library? What I can do is now right click and choose to edit this within the cloud. Let's say somebody or the librarian or whatnot wants to make some modifications, they're like, oh, you don't have enough information in here, then you can do that. And in fact, let me show you, you can choose add, you can choose to add part choices, right? Now it's going to search for any generic thing from the component name. So what you want to do is X out of this, have it search for the manufacturer part number. Then it will select it. And then now you have all this information you can get from online, right? For your options. And then it will ask, do you want to use this manufacturer parts number data from the cloud? And absolutely. Okay. No, I don't want to update the name. I do want to update the description. However, the height, yes. The length um, doesn't, it's not too important, right? And you got your symbols if you want to add them. I'll just go ahead and go with these options here. Then you get a whole, a whole list of things you can add to your device, your component that you pulled from the local library. So you don't need to add all of these locally, manually and all that stuff. You can just get something quick and fast from Octopart or from Ultra Librarian and um, upload it to your, you know, save, make your modifications, customize it the way you want, and then save it to server release. So see how it gives me some validation errors, some validation issues that I should resolve. I can push it through anyway, but let's see. It will say duplicate primitives, right? On mechanical three would not. Is that okay? Or is that a problem? I would then go into my PCB footprint where mechanical or mechanical, or excuse me, 13 is having this issue and see if that's an issue. 
If it's not a real issue and it's just, you know, letting me know, hey, double check this, then I'm going to go ahead and save and release and validate that anyway, and maybe make a note. Mechanical layer 13 might have duplicate items, but it's fine. New capacitor, right? And you put the manufacturer part number. Obviously, we know it's a new capacitor, but that's the process you kind of want to go through to make sure people understand that. Okay, now that it's part of your 365 environment, I'm going to close this, list it again, whether I look for it through my manufacturer part number or through the comp or the name that I use for the local library, see it pulls up updated with the description, the footprint and all that stuff. Okay, it's super easy. I mean, it really makes life so much better as a hardware engineer using the Altium 365 environment. Okay, so use that. And if you're uh, if you're using your local libraries, you can add them to 365 and streamline your workflow.